Good morning, America. Steve Eisen here. It's April 6, Friday, 2012, here at the beautiful state of South Carolina in the great county of Lexington. And we have our guest speaker, one of our guest speakers, Kara Gormley Metter, with us. And it's 7 a.m. Anytime mm -hmm. you're coming through the state of South Carolina, feel free to come by the Shoney's here on Airport Boulevard, right next to the airport. So, Kara, it's great yes. to have you with us. Good she's, to be here. She's running for State Senate District 18. Yes, sir. Kara, why are you running for office? Um, a lot of people ask that. I'm a former broadcaster, and I think that people believe because they often saw me behind the camera that I pretty much read from a teleprompter and that was it. But the truth is that my entire career was spent traveling the state, meeting people, and often it would land me at the state house or in Lexington County, and the reasons would not always be the most positive ones. So I used to sit back and think about all the ways that we could make the state better. And as I thought about it more, my kids are getting to an age where they're going to school, I thought instead of sitting back and talking about fixing the problems, that I would take a step and try to actually do something about it. And, and today she's going to tell us about those solutions and how she's going to do that. So this is going to be a most interesting presentation this morning. And we're waiting on our guest from Australia to show up any time now. So, Kara, thanks for being with Thank us today. Thank you so much. And you'll hear her presentation in just a few moments. So, anytime you're coming through South Carolina, feel free to stop by Shawnee's, Casey Mafia, the nonpartisan group <laughs> here in South Carolina. It's always entertaining. We never know what will happen. And I tell everyone here they're responsible for their own comments when they stand up in front of this camera. So, until next Friday, have a good time. See you later. Steve Eisen signing off. Bye. Better next speaker running for Senate District 18. Kara. Thanks. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here this morning. Um, I'm trying to caffeinate up because you do get up early, but I appreciate the chance to talk to you and meet people face to face. Um, I am not a politician. We've established that. I had a career in television, and I thought and prayed long and hard before making a decision to get into this field of politics. The only people hated more than reporters are politicians. So, uh, you know, I, I'm used to that scrutiny. Um, and before, in coming to my decision to run for office, I attended some meetings to start to hear what people are saying. One of them, uh, most recently in Lexington District 1, talking about the state of education in South Carolina and listening to the teachers and the educators uh, talk about what they consider the issues. And as I sat there, my kids, I have a six, a four, and a two-year-old, you know, we're getting close to school age, I got depressed. Lexington One is supposed to be one of the leading uh, places to get education in our state, or at least the Midlands. And those folks, the teachers, uh, are down and out. They have over 30 students in certain classrooms. Um, their salaries, in often cases, are very low. And they see a system that they say are, is top-heavy with uh, superintendents, the Department of Education, a lot of these folks making ex excess of $100,000, it's hard for them to get motivated when they're right there in the trenches and they see uh, these folks that are in more management positions making a lot of money. It's very hard to get motivated to go into that classroom when the cost to educate a student is less now than it was in the early 2000s. And after that meeting, uh, Representative Kenny Bingham was there and he was speaking to me and uh, said, you know, Kara, if you do decide to run, if you do decide to go and uh, seek this office, you're going to love the campaign trail because you can get out and you can meet people and you can see folks from all different walks of life, the people that you might have a chance to represent. And when he said that, it almost helped me make my decision to run because in television, that's what we did for my entire career. I got out into the state, I met people, I listened to problems. And as I mentioned in our little pre-interview, those problems often ended at the state house, and uh, those problems turned into be certain bills. And when I say that, I mean behind the bills at the state house, oftentimes are faces of people who need change, faces who uh, need the economy to change in order for basic survival. So I feel like, uh, well, you know, I don't have the political background that a lot of folks that I'm running against do have, I think that's a good thing in this day and age, that we don't need career politicians who have developed these relationships over the years where they feel that they owe folks things and they get in the state house and there comes our problem of saying one thing and doing the other. They have all of these pressures behind the scenes that are tugging them one way or another. I know the people and the players of the state house 
but I don't have those ties. And I feel like I do have a strong voice from being up there where I can stand up for the people of District 18 and do what is right. And that is my major motivation, to make life better for my six, my four, and my two-year-old as they reach for the American dream that I feel like may pass us by if we don't start changing things and don't change things quickly. Um, I appreciate anyone who has given time and service to our state and to our country. And I'm not here to talk ill about anyone. But I do believe that accountability uh, is very important. And we need to hold our current leaders accountable for how they voted. I wouldn't be here if I did not feel that I would offer a better option for voters than what we currently have in office. Uh, Senator Cromer, in my opinion, has cast some ballots in some very non-Republican kind of ways. Um, obviously, if you check his voting record, he is a lot more fiscally liberal than we are as Republicans. Um, but outside of that, one of the big problems we have here in South Carolina is transparency. We've talked about it for years. We know things need to change. Uh, if we are more transparent, we will see that there are many ways that we can save money in this state. And Senator Cromer recently voted on a bill that was brought forth by Senator Tom Davis that would shed the light of transparency on economic incentives given to businesses who want to come into our state. He voted against that bill. And I just don't understand why anyone would vote against shedding more light on serious issues, especially when it comes to uh, people from out of state often coming in and getting tax breaks that our companies and our businesses in state fail to have. They don't have the same type of opportunities as a lot of these <coughs> folks coming in to do business, even though South Carolina businesses represent 97% of the folks who do business in our state. Transparency is a huge issue. Um, also, you know, I think when it comes to education, we talk about universal school choice. I believe in it. I believe in competition uh, in all aspects of our life. But I do believe that this would make our schools better. Also, I think that it would help with accountability in the long run. But I also think that we need to start looking at ways where we can save money right now and start adding up all of those dollars in order to start rolling back some of our taxes here in South Carolina. When you start breaking down uh, every aspect of our government, you can start to see where you can uh, save hundreds of thousands of dollars here, a uh, million dollars there. And well, when you look at them in segments, it doesn't seem like it's enough to make any huge dent in all of our issues. When you start collectively putting that money together, we can cut down on our budget without raising taxes. We can offer people tax breaks or businesses. You have to start fixing these problems little by little. And I do believe in the long run, when we start looking at these issues in segments, we can start to move forward. We also need to make sure that folks aren't lining their own pockets. That right now, I heard a statistic that there are two and a half lobbyists for every lawmaker in South Carolina. How can that be a good thing to have all of these lobbyists, two and a half versus every lawmaker? People are in office forever in South Carolina. Incumbents stay in forever. And that's why I'm so excited about this year having so many people, especially in District 18, stepping out. I just feel that you know we want to have the best people in office, but when people stay in for these long terms, they develop relationships, they are lured by incentives, and don't always do the right thing. So I think that term limits would be a good thing uh, to be imposed on our lawmakers in order to try to cut these relationships from basically strangling our state. I also think that cutting down on the length of the legislative session and bringing it more in line with the average uh, around the country would also help us save money. I think we need to start looking what's best for the state. Um, in the, the preacher in the there, you talked about um, doing what's right and what's good. And I think part of the problem is we've lost our character in this state. We've lost our integrity. And I want to start bringing that back. I, I don't believe um, that people who get into office and are already looking to that next step, they want to be governor, they want to be a congressperson. I don't believe those folks can concentrate on the job at hand and do the best job for our state. And I believe that 
if you elect me to represent um, the state, that I will look at the job at hand. I have no desire to move on to a higher office. I just want to do what's right for the state. And I would take any questions that you have as well. Sir. I support you on the uh, idea about uh, taking some of the management out of the schools and yes. putting that money into the classroom. Yes. Because I do not understand why Lexington County has five districts and they should have one. In the state of Tennessee, there's one superintendent for every county. How many superintendents do we have? Well, 95 uh, filed to tell folks of our state how much they make. And the mean average of the people that filed was $140,000, or salary. Um, there are, I think, 15 that didn't even file, and I'm not sure why that was. But in addition to that, from what I am discovering, when you go into these schools, there are all of these interesting management type of positions, like um, in one of the school systems, there was an assistant that dealt with dress code. I mean, that was one of their major functions. And for that, they were kind of a, on a managerial type of salary. I think we really need to go in and examine where we can um, cut and, and take care of some of this waste. And one of the things I also feel to talk about are exemptions. This state is notorious. We do study after study about how to save money, uh, and especially when it comes to the tax issues that we're also aware of. I think it was 2009, there was a study called TRAC, where this group came up with all of these different ways that we could cut uh, taxes and save money, and it was looking at exemptions. They found we could cut 60 of our 200 tax exemptions right now and save the state over $600,000. The study never went anywhere. Nobody ever did anything about that. We've spent time and money, a waste of time and money on these studies. For what? To just ignore them? We just can't afford to do that anymore. Okay, one more question. One more. Uh, I support you on your stand on the uh, limitations of, uh, uh, of uh, office. Two, two times is plenty. George Washington put that uh, idea forward, and I think he was right. But we got away from it, and people go in and stay forever, and they get uh, they get their agenda messed up by being being in there too long. I think two terms is plenty for anybody. I agree with that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here.